Hi everybody, Salu from MightyMolds.com and today we're going to do a full candle pour video with our 9 inch taper candle uh, from MightyMolds.com. So to do this you will need a few things. You will need the two straps that are included with your Mighty Mold. You'll need a wicking needle that is also included with your purchase of a Mighty Mold. You'll need your wick. You'll need some sort of wick clip. Uh, be it a bobby pin, piece of wood, uh, whatever you decide to use, whatever you prefer. Uh, and then I would also recommend a pair of pliers. And that will uh, keep things a lot, a lot nicer on your hands. So beyond that, uh, we'll go ahead and, and start. This is the uh, preferred and best wet method of assembling and wicking a Mighty Mold. So we'll take the first layer here and lay it down on a flat surface. You've got your large eye wicking needle and a piece of wick. We place the wick through the needle eye and then I don't know if you can see it on camera probably not but there are actually guides on each registration here and you can just follow the guide straight through bring the wick with it now you have a wicked cavity. The wicks will probably be a little spindly, so you'll have to deal with that. The longer the candle gets, the longer the wick gets, the more difficult it's going to be to keep it from trying to, you know, do this and get caught by the mold. So just make sure you're paying attention to how your wick's laying whenever you close it. I'll go ahead and get the rest of these. Oh, pulled my wick out. This is also something you can do if you have a hard time. Uh, with the wick on just the needle, you can actually secure the needle first and then push the wick through. And it's easier for some people, it's actually harder for me, but. That one's through. Probably speed this part up for the video for you guys. So now we'll take our next layer and we're going to lay that down on top of it flat and press down hard. And like I said, what we really want to make sure is all these wicks are laying in a good position before we put it down on top of it. I don't think we should get any problems with that. That one's going to be an issue. All right. So you just literally put the next layer on and you can see it's already trying to close in on itself. I'm going to pull that second wick a little bit and get it out of there. There we go. And now you just press down nice and firm. And again, you see that it already was down. It wants to go down on itself automatically. Uh, if it's fighting you to go down, if it doesn't want to close, you've probably got an obstruction, uh, dried wax, something like that. Uh, so go ahead and clean out the mold before you do that, and it should go back down easier. It should never be a fight to get a Mighty Mold to, go, to, to come apart, or uh, go together, I'm sorry. All right, and that is eight cavities wicked. We're straight again. You're going to actually center them with clips at the top. You just want to make sure that you're not getting the wicks closed in on the mold when you're checking that. And again, it just wants to go down on its own. Just press firmly, and that's all there is to it. And now we can go ahead and stand it up. And the biggest part is to make sure you strap these. You always want to use straps. With a mighty mold, it is a, a separated mold. There are multiple pieces. You want to make sure that there's tension and it's all being held together tautly. But what you don't want to do is over tighten. You don't want to yank this thing and make it to where it starts bowing and twisting because then you can cause a leak. But as long as you just get these secured tightly, not overly tight, it'll keep everything together and we'll be good. So 
this is all I do just pull tight and then wrap it around and now it's closed we'll do the same thing on the top do you want to spend a good amount of time and make sure that you get these level you don't want them to be uneven a little bit's okay but for the most part you want them to try to be nice and, and straight and now we'll go through and we'll start securing our wicks now you do have to be careful sometimes that you don't pull too hard and pull the wick through because then you have to open the mold and re-wick that one cavity or just decide not to pour that one candle which is usually what I do but These wick clips were included in our, our molds for a long time and we lost our supplier, so we're still working on replacing these, but eventually we will be including these back with every order as well too. Uh, right now we kind of need everybody to use their, their preference, whether it be a bobby pin, that's what I would recommend if anybody's looking for wick clips, something for, for wick management. Uh, they do sell bobby pins in different lengths. Uh, and they're basically the, the perfect tool for this if you don't have something like this. Alright, so we have eight candles wicked up, ready to go. We'll go ahead and pour some wax. So that's all the cavities filled. We'll go back through and just make sure that we top off some of these lower ones. We want that pour spot to be kind of full so that we can cut that off at the end and come out with a completely full size candle. You will get your wick clips a little dirty, but hey, we can clean those. And there we go. That's eight fully, uh, fully made candles. And we'll visit back with you again here in a little bit once they're dry and show the unmolding process. All right, so it's been a couple hours. Our candles are set, so we're going to go ahead and uh, do a unmolding process for you and, and show you how that goes. So the first thing we're going to do is loosen up our wick clips here. I hope we don't break too many of them. That's the only problem with using anything plastic like this. If you can get metal bobby pins, they won't break on you. I may end up breaking a couple of these. And so far, so good. And you'll see here that this wick actually got trapped into the pore spout of this. And that's not a problem because we're going to be trimming that off. And this is just the pore spout. It's not a part of the actual candle. So that's also part of the reason why we, we over pour the cavity so that we have room for anything like that that happens. All right, one more. We're good there. We'll go ahead and remove the straps. candles in there waiting for us and we can literally just pull and pop those out like that now remove the other layer you may have some excess wax you might just want to pull off before you start separating layers Layer. 
And again, we'll just pop these out, pull the wick through. And that is the process of unmolding a nine inch taper candle using the Mighty Molds mold system. Thank you guys for watching and we will be back soon with more videos.